Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this, the fireside chat of, well, slightly later than expected, <laughs> but we're just getting our heads around this Facebook Live thing. We think we've sorted it out. There is a multitude of great technical personnel standing down at the fireside, at least at the final control, with Kirsten and Jerry and Louise and various others. And here we are, broadcasting to you live from the African wilderness by the fireside, which is, of course, a great African and indeed universal tradition where we share stories and talk about interesting things that have happened to us, well, in this case, over the course of a week. We're going to be talking about cubs ostensibly today, a special time we've had with some cat cubs. Uh, there are, of course, no bear cubs in this area, and unfortunately, our hyenas have absconded to some bambili, so we haven't been looking at those cubs. First off, let's go and look at our queen, and George and Charlotte, not their real names. Have a look at this. Um, and <laughs> Much lankier, but thinner. Oh, you can really see the size. Oopsie. Oh, no. <laughs> out of the tree. <laughs> They're both there. In fact, I think Mum's in there as well. I can't believe it. Look. So when we drowned and we came to the other side, he looked at us briefly and then he started to continue to pig out on this impala. He's having a wonderful supper. This young fellow. That is too spectacular. So what an unbelievable... <laughs> <laughs> Bit of wind behind me, sorry about that. What an... <laughs> start that again. What an unbelievable sighting Dum. that was. Yes, thank you, Ben. Shut up. <laughs> and we've all been privileged to spend quite a lot of time with Karula's cubs in the last little while. Jamie, um, your particular highlight of those little things? Oh, I think the moment when the male fell out of the tree and Karula just went around and nipped him on the stomach, I think was definitely the highlight. And what struck me was for both of us, we lost the power of words. We giggled a lot. Yes, we you did. did. You did in, in that sighting as well. So. In, an embarrassing mm. amount of giggling that happened mm. there. But I did, they were just so highly entertaining. I mean, with you, I find it quite fetching. But of me, I just sound ridiculous. You know, I mean, uh, brain donkey comes to mind. Yeah. Brain donkey. Braying donkey. Braying donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stare awkwardly at the fire for a little while. Uh, <laughs> when was your last sighting of them? Uh, the same as yours, but I went. Uh, I was off that afternoon. I went and spent two hours there between yes. drives, just sitting and taking some photographs. And you took some lovely shots. Mm, it's beautiful. On Instagram. Yes, it was very, very nice. And I also did a little bit of uh, sort of habituation because mm. they sometimes a little bit nervous. Mm. So just starting the car, letting it ride, talking to myself. <laughs> but it's some of the things you've got to do to get those leopard mm. cubs nice and relaxed. Hopefully, they'll be scurrying about under the car shortly. Yes, well, hopefully not, not under not the car. Under the car. <laughs> uh, so they're four months old now, and I mean, in your experience, that would be, a, I mean, they should be pretty relaxed about around vehicles by now, hey? It, they should be, and they are. Uh, you definitely notice when there's more than two vehicles yeah. in the sighting, and they do change. So theoretically, we should be able to put three vehicles into the sighting now, but again, this is a judgment call, and each individual animal in sighting is different. And the same animal can behave completely different on a different day. So at the moment, I think we keep it to mm. two, uh, give them some space, and uh, that will hopefully keep them yeah. really nice and relaxed in the long run. Now, I mentioned that the hyenas have absconded off to Simbambili, which is, of course, to the northwest of where we're sitting now. And Janine, you have a very good question. Do we, do we think that Karula has been spending a little bit more time north of the boundary because the hyenas have moved? I'm going to pass this over to Jamie. What do you think? I think it's I think it's a distinct possibility. Also, it might also where she puts them might depend on Tingana's movements as well, depending on what mm. kind of patrolling job he's doing. Since he at least believes he is the father, there's a chance mm. that he's the father and she doesn't want to encounter any random strange male leopards. And that's difficult at the moment because Mvula's bouncing about and he was on Juma today. Mm. Um, there's always the possibility of Sindile wandering around and Kunuma as well. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, I, I'm, 
I find it very interesting because I think that this general area is fairly de devoid of female leopard life at the moment. Yeah. And she's actually inside. She's pretty much, as we said last week, I think, in the corner between uh, uh, Tandi's territory and Shadow's territory. She's kind of tiny little area that she's operating. There's enough to eat there, so I guess that's where she's, she's going to be for now. Could be the lions as well. I mean, we've had a yeah. lot of lion activity. In the north. And, and, and also, I mean, the hyenas. There's been male lions up and down and around where that den was. Yeah. And that could also cause them to move. I mean, Just that's... Skedaddle. You know, it's, yeah. it's, if you're a hyena, the last thing you want around your den is a male lion. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, of course, now, you, many of you, of course, are going to be very upset with me for saying this. I'm not sure that leopards are, in fact, the cutest cubs in the bush. <laughs> I think what Jamie saw the other day constitutes the cutest <laughs> animal in the bush. Look what we've got. Little cub has, just as mom rolled over, she dislodged the cub from the suckling. Oh! Oh! Look at that. She's trying to get the cub to play with her tail. One of the most one. incredible sightings that we have had in a very long time. Really, really incredible. And I didn't know that that cub was there at all. In fact, it came as a total shock when she was, the lioness was lying very far away, not on our um, traverse area. And Brent's looking, looking at me out of the corner of his eye because he actually spent most of the morning staking out that site and waiting <laughs> for the cubs to wander across and they didn't. And I returned there that afternoon. VM said to me, that lioness has not moved. And then she did. And then there was a cub attached to her. Amazing. I was on the other end of the radio and I was absolutely astonished. <laughs> the final control went absolutely ballistic. Now, Brent, of course, had it been me there, you would have been very upset. But because you're such a gentleman, you were so pleased of course that I Jamie was. got to share <laughs> in the lion cub. Even though it was Jamie, I was still jealous, I have to admit. But and better I than if it had been me. Yeah, probably. Yes. Vim and I played the patience game on that boundary for about an hour and a half of a flat lioness at 400 meters <laughs> down the road. I was like, Vim, the gum's going to come. We just... And how did... Oh, yeah. baboon argument. Baboon's very cross <laughs> at the moment. Um, how did you know that the cub was there? I heard on the radio. Oh, uh, you'd heard on the radio. Yeah, okay. I heard, I heard there. there were actually, there were six cubs there. Ah, now that brings us neatly on to Anne's question. How many sticks cubs are there? Six, is that 11. correct? Eleven. <laughs> wow. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. So last I heard, um, one might have died. Okay. So one cub? Or? One cub. Right. So apparently 11. So the oldest lioness only gave birth to one cub. The others gave birth to five. Crazy. I know. Normally it's three or four. Yeah. Um, five each. Five each. And I think there's four sticks lionesses now. So oh, right. somehow okay. the numbers add up there. But the oldest lioness gave birth to one cub and it was very unhealthy from mm. from the get-go, apparently very skinny, not looking well. Mm. And uh, I did hear from some of the other guys, it didn't look like she's lactating too well. So, Which is uh, typical. I mean, that's yeah, just what unusual. happens when animals get old. Mm. I think, I mean, when we were f watching those three lionesses with their three cubs before the Birminghams came in, that was known as a Styx breakaway, wasn't it? I mean, they did... very confusing. Yeah. It is very confusing because we're not, we're obviously not, not in the tr central traverse of where they are. And Styx Breakaway is now joined back with the original mm. Styx. Yeah. So I, I think there's four, possibly five lionesses. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure. No. And, and I mean, I've, I've had two of them on Sheila Plains as the only mm. sign of the Styx. And apart from that, mm. yeah. that, that sighting. So, yeah. so I mean, we're, we're, the southern end of Juma is the northern part of their territory. But, of course, now with our increased traverse on Cheetah Plains, the chances of seeing 11 little lion cubs all going, ow, 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 which would just be too fantastic. I, I, I do that western boundary every single time. Yeah. I <laughs> She's so play exciting. Looking for chance. Wonderful. Okay, we're going to move on to our next clip now, which is, of course, uh, not cubs. Uh, unfortunately, Brent, uh, I know that uh, you were hoping yes, for some more Kahuma cubs. Have a look. Success! We've got... One of the lionesses here, another one, they haven't found each other, they're looking for each other, and this is the calling we've been hearing. And you can see this is one of the ones that's had babies. You can see the suckle marks. She is quite hungry, uh, but 
fat belly we're seeing there is from uh, her engorged nipples because she has cubs at the moment. Now I'm not sure which is lioness. This could be the one that's got the den side. So there is the amazing possibility of a pride of lions that we do traverse the center of their range having cubs. We know the one lioness has got three cubs. She's in Torchwood. Now, I'm, we're very, 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 very convinced that the second lioness has now given birth very close to Juma. So I spoke to Abel from Buffalo's Hook this evening, and he found that Nkuma lioness on the Buffalo's Hook boundary just to the north of us here, calling, but cub calling, not contact calling, that oh, oh, and pacing up and down in that a little river system that flows into actually the back of Voyatella Dam. Now, Herbert was with me. Mm -hmm. Herbert and I looked at each other. Yes. <laughs> we walked slightly into the bush there. Mm. And as the, 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 the thick, thickets Began started shaking, to you. we decided we're brave, but we're not that brave. <laughs> I think that's a very wise move. What Brent means, everybody, is that, uh, of course, the opportunity to go and track a lioness with cubs is always there. Of course, you have to be slightly suicidal to do it on a day like today when you cannot hear or smell anything. And so that lioness might be growling, telling you very nicely, <laughs> step away, and you just keep blundering forward, whereupon she will probably launch herself from the bush at a great speed, and there is nothing on God's no. green earth more terrifying than a lioness coming at you out of a thicket with two little cubs behind her. You stand, you've stood down a lioness's charge before. A, a couple of them, and once we accidentally blundered completely into the middle of her den site with the cubs behind us, we had no idea she was there. Um, and actually, I had people with me, and I, I kept saying to them, okay, we're going to back up, we're going to back up. Why, why are you not moving? Oh, because there, there's cubs behind you. I see, I understand. Okay, fair enough. All right, we'll go that way then. Uh, it's always, it's, 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 it makes you feel very alive spine chilling. afterwards. Yeah. Yes, it does make you feel alive, I suppose. Uh, Gracie, aged eight, thank you so much for your very kind compliment. Uh, you, you were watching my hippo drawing in the tent today. <laughs> now, Gracie, I bet you could draw a hippo far better than I can, and I must apologize for those who had to watch my terrible art, but Gracie very kindly sent through a comment saying that she thought it was very nice. Gracie, that's very kind of you. Thank you so very much. Now, we're going to close off the show, of course, with a little song, as we always do. But this time, there's going to be some participation from my two colleagues over here. Now, one of whom I know can sing, the other of whom is more tone deaf than the log I'm sitting on. But that's okay. We're going to do some... It's, it's, it's a talking kind of a, a, a thing. <laughs> I don't want it to take too long. We're just going to do one verse and one chorus of this song, and the song is called Owls. Now, an owl in Shangan is Shkova. Shkova. There we go. And the one bit of this chorus goes like this. Shkova shagu vitana. Shkova shagu vitana. Shkova shagu vitana. Okay, got it. That means the owl is calling you. The owl is calling you. So when I stamp on the ground, okay, you will know. It would have a quick practice here. It goes like this, so <laughs> we'll go. Um, the owl is calling your name. Now, while I'm doing that, you're going to be going, Shkova shagu vitana, Shkova shagu vitana. The owl is calling your name. <laughs> one brilliant, one utterly hopeless. Okay, here we go. Right, well, we'll just do one verse and then the chorus and see you tomorrow, uh, dark and early, half past six. See you then. <laughs> Sparrow wakes in the embers of sunrise Feathers ruffle in the cold morning air A spider folds up a dew sparkling web A new day is born for me A new day is born for me Not just yet. I catch a scent in the cool of the dawn Your eyes shine with the morning sun I catch your scent and my spirit's lonely voice I hear you dance in the mist Oh, my calling your name <laughs> 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 Oh, my God.